welcome to the John DeVito Show. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, today I want to talk about something that I've been thinking about quite a bit lately. And if you haven't already noticed, when I come into these shows, I pretty much free flow. You know, I, I get on and just talk about what comes to mind. I don't really plan these out. I kind of organize my thoughts and then just kind of go for the podcast itself. So this is one of the things I've been thinking about quite a bit as of late. And I don't know. These aren't things that I really thought about a lot when, a lot when I was younger. But now that I'm you know, in my mid-50s and thinking about the state of the world right now, maybe the state of the world has always been what it is now. And maybe when I viewed the 1970s, the 1980s, the 1990s, maybe I was just a younger person and looking at the world through younger eyes, not realizing that there were as many difficult situations happening across the planet as are happening right now. So that could be what it is. Maybe I'm just looking at the world uh, as an older person and seeing a lot of the things that happen that really shouldn't happen in society today. So today I wanted to talk about the true battle between good and evil that I think we're experiencing right now, not just in the United States of America, but all over the world. And I've thought about it a lot. And if you really think about the lines, the battle line, the battle lines, they have been drawn pretty clearly now between the people that are pursuing good and the, and the people that are pursuing evil. And I think the thing that's scary about this specifically is this is where a lot of wars begin, a lot of religious wars. Like you look, you look at the holy wars, you look at the wars in the Middle East because of people of different, different religions. You know, one religion really, I mean, really both sides believe that their religion is correct. They believe that their way of life is correct. And both sides believe that they are right. And that is, I think, what is scary when you come into these type of situations where there seems to be just a divide now between good and evil. And to me, it seems it's very apparent. I'm not sure if other people see it like I do, but I mean, for me, when I look at the goodness in life, the good things that come with life and the obvious bad things that come with life, I mean, right now I, I see it. And it's just so clear to me. I'm not sure if, again, like I said, all of you feel that way or see it like I do. But when you look at many of the things that are happening in this world right now, if you look at the abuse of children, now this is something that you know I've done some shows on. I've talked about talked about what happened on Epstein's Island, and of course, not one person has been brought to justice from Epstein's Island, and that to me is almost as great a crime as what happened on that island. That we have evidence. We know who was there. We know what they were doing. <clears throat> and people have not been brought to justice. So to me, that shows that the evil that I'm talking about is very pervasive throughout our government, throughout the elite, throughout the connected, that they really know that they can do pretty much whatever they want without any repercussions. They control everything. So... These people spent God knows how long abusing these young children on this island. And if you think that's the only place in this world where that's happening, it's one of many. I'm sure there are other Epstein's Islands out there. We all know about the numbers that are thrown, out, thrown around with children being sold into you know, sex trafficking. I mean, to me, can you really come up with anything more evil <clears throat> than the sex trade and things such as this, and especially the abuse of children who should be valued and considered just these innocent, wonderful creations. And we're allowing them to be abused and the people that are abusing them are not having to pay any price for that abuse. I mean, that right there to me is the epitome of evil. Then you look at you know the wars that we have going on, the war between Russia and Ukraine. Now, I'm not even gonna get into picking who I support in this. <clears throat> Just like I'm not going to get into really who I support between the war between Palestine or Hamas and Israel right now. I mean, 
I, I have my feelings on both. You've heard them in other podcasts. You know, I don't support America sending money to Ukraine. And regarding, you know, what's happening in between Hamas and Israel, I do feel that Hamas has been the aggressor. And Israel is striking back. Not to say that there are not a lot of beautiful Palestinian people out there that are caught in the crossfire. And I feel for them. There was a report that one of the Hamas leaders was killed in a, in a raid where he was in a refugee camp. And people are upset that refugees were killed. You know, war, people who are supposed to be safe from the attacks of war, they were killed. But that is one of the things that these terrorist groups do, like Hamas. They hide their leaders in very vulnerable populations with children, with people who are supposed to be safe, where the enemy cannot attack. And that's how they prevent their enemy from getting to them. So it's not cut and dry when you hear about Israel bombing that refugee camp. Not to say that it's right. I'm not here to morally judge anybody. But when they're hiding their leaders in places like that with innocent people, <clears throat> you know, what options do you have if these are the same people that are attacking your country and killing your people? So anyway, you know, it's a hard thing to talk about. But if you look at the evil that's happening there, in the Middle East. You look at the evil that's happening between Ukraine and Russia. You look at the evil that happened on Epstein's Island. You look at the evil that happens all over the world in sex trafficking. I mean, that's just the tip of it. If you look at society in general, you know, consider the American society back in 1950, 1960, 1970, and maybe today in the 2020s, you know, 2023 as it is right now. Back in those days, we talked about this on another show, there were very limited forms of media. The messages were a lot more positive with family television shows, a lack of violence, a lack of sex on television. There was no social media. There was no YouTube. There was no internet back then. So today, there's so many bits of information coming at people, and a lot of it is negative. A lot of it is pushing you know, sexuality of younger people. It's pushing all these things that could be perceived as being evil in, you know, if, if you go back to like 1950, 1960, the feelings about what, what was being shared with children today would be shocking for those people. And I think I just think it's unfortunate that we no longer give children the chance to grow up at a normal pace. They're expected to be adults by the time they're nine or 10 years old, and they're not emotionally equipped for that. So, I look at all the wars, I look at the sex trafficking, I look at the way society and the media and social media has changed the message that goes out to all Americans. And you have to be pretty positive that that message is being received when you see the end result of what society is today compared to what it was, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. It was drastically different. So I don't know, you know, there's, there's a lot to think about. And you, you think about the leaders of our country. Now, aside from talking about Epstein's Island, you look at the way our country is being led. I mean, do you honestly believe that any of these politicians care about you? Do you honestly believe that the majority of these politicians are honest and looking out for the best interests of the Americans in this country? Or are they looking out for self-interest? Are they getting paid by companies who want votes to go in their direction? Are they making deals with other countries? You know, is their base salary really what they make their money with? Or are they getting money from all these different sources that's affecting the way that they vote? Otherwise, there would not be any politicians that would want to be in office for 40 years. The benefits, aside from the salary, the pension, and all the other things they have, are is the power that comes along with it. And the command that they have with their votes. So... You look at politicians, you look at the media. Now, if you went back, again, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, people were a lot more in tune with religion. They're a lot more in tune with God. They're a lot more in tune with having a spiritual relationship with the man upstairs or the woman upstairs, however you want to look at it. Um, but if you look today, believing in God and supporting in the goodness that God's message preached has become a negative thing in society. I mean, if you look at our, at our currency, in God we trust, right on it. 
in the Pledge of Allegiance, one nation under God. We were a country that was very much supportive of God and religions and living a good moral life. And what we see today is things have come full circle. The people that believe in religion and a higher power are people that are now made to look like they have the problem, that they are the ones that have the morality issue. When you look at the way society is being run right now with a lot of things that wouldn't have been acceptable 50 years ago are perfectly acceptable and now considered trend-setting in today's society. So, you know, there's definitely a lot to think about when it comes to the battle against good and evil. And I think we're seeing that right now in our world where we are seeing a worldwide battle against good and evil. And I, like a lot of people, hope that it doesn't turn into the next world war. It could be World War Three if the United States gets drawn in to Syria and we've already been attacked 27 times, our military bases in the Middle East. And if the United States gets involved and some of the other world superpowers get involved, you're going to start to see more and more countries get, get involved. And this could in, evolve into the next world war. So it's scary to think, it's scary to think about, it, but I do think we're seeing like a worldwide thing right now where it's literally a battle of the good versus the evil. But the problem is when you think about that battle, of course, we think that we're good. And the other side we look at as being evil. The problem is they have the same mentality where they feel that they have the right cause if we have the wrong cause. So I don't know. I don't know what all the answers are. I don't know what can be done to change this. But I, you know, in one of the other podcasts that I did, I talked about how we have a decay in morality in this country. And I think we really do. And it, it's not just in this country. It's everywhere where children don't have respect for parents. They don't have respect for adults. They don't have respect for authority figures. And even people like adults don't have respect for each other. There's just a general lack of respect amongst people in this world right now. And I, I don't know if that's because we all live more of a remote life. We don't have as much social interaction or people just feel that being decent is no longer something that's expected from them. Now, I was thinking about the other day, I heard someone talking about how younger people, when they go into work now, there's like no dress code whatsoever. You know, sometimes they wear you know, sweatpants, they wear you know, sneakers, things like that into, into work. And I'm not exactly sure how sneakers became a dress shoe, but of course now you spent 300 bucks in a pair of Jordans and now the dress shoes because you spent a lot of money on it. So that's another thing I guess I don't quite understand about today. But when you look at the way kids go to school today, kids today go to school, they can wear shorts, they can wear shorts in the middle of January, they can wear sweatpants, they can wear sneakers, girls dress, dress half naked when they're in school. I mean, I look at when I was a kid, I mean, you had, even in public schools, you had dress codes, you had to have a certain level of decorum and respect in the way you came to school every day and you dressed yourself. And that was expected also in the workplace. So that has kind of disappeared from society also. And not to say that I mind not having to wear a tie. Earlier in my career, I had to wear a tie and I hate wearing a damn tie. So I'm kind of glad that passed. But we definitely don't see any type of expectation for anyone, anyone to look good in society or dress appropriately anymore. And I think that now carries on from high school right through college and into the workplace. So who knows? You know, it, there's a lot going on. But if you look at everything right now in the U.S., I mean, not that things were perfect under our previous president, but under Trump, we had we may have had mean tweets, but we had world peace, right? Mean tweets and world peace. I think most people would take mean tweets and world peace over this debacle that we have right now running Washington that has commanded absolutely no respect for the rest of the world. He's running our economy into the ground. He has jeopardized us. And from what I can see is his party, I don't want to say everybody on the left, but everybody that's associated with the Biden administration and everybody that is in that corner, like the squad and that whole leftist extremist group, they really represent evil right now. They represent the evil of this country. And I'm hoping that in 2024, we can come back and take the White House back if they don't cheat again and maybe start to restore some goodness into this world. Because there are so many things we can talk about. I mean, you look at the border, the southern border between the U.S. and Mexico. Over the last three years since Joe Biden was put into office, and I say put in, not elected in, but he was put into office, there have been an estimated 1.8 million illegal aliens immigrants, whatever you want to call them, coming into this country 
over the last three, three, you know, three years. Now, 1.8 million people. Now, think about 1.8 million people. We don't know who they are. We don't know what their records are. We don't know if they've been arrested, if they're good people, if they've been felons, if they're drug dealers, if they're terrorists, if they're good mothers and fathers. We don't know. So let's just estimate that 2% of the 1.8 million are bad people. All right. The rest, the rest, the other 98% are all good people, hardworking people, no criminal records, et cetera. 2% of 1.8 million is roughly 76,000 people. So if we've let in 1.8 million people and the majority of them are good people, that's great. They become members in our society. They start working. They become citizens. They, you know, fill jobs and pay taxes, et cetera. But how about the 76,000 people that are not good people that are now roaming our country? that are committing crimes, that are possessing guns, that are selling drugs, that maybe are terrorists planning to make the next September 11th bombing happen. We don't know. We don't know who these people are. And that's one of the reasons why we need to have borders in this country. We need to have a checks and balances system at the border. Now, again, how does this tie into evil? We are allowing evil into our country. And who other than an evil administration would allow potential evil and potential dangers into your country, it would be an administration that itself supports evil. As some, uh, a, a, an administration that wants to see the destruction of one of the last three countries in the world. Now, we've talked a lot in the past about Agenda 2030, the World Economic Forum, all these different things. They want the United States to become compliant in a one world government. And the problem they have with the United States is we are the lar a country that owns the most guns in the world. And of course, the politicians on the left want to take everyone's guns away. They don't want to talk about mental illness, which is the reason why people pick up guns and kill people. That doesn't matter. It's just about the tool that they use. So we have these the fights in this country where the liberals are trying to take away the guns. They're trying to rip up the Constitution and take away the Second Amendment that says that we are guaranteed the right to bear arms. And it shall not be infringed in case we need to develop a militia. People call that outdated. Is it outdated? The men that wrote it were geniuses, and they had just gotten done liberating a country from an oppressor, which was Britain at the time. So were they outdated, or were they intelligent? And did they see what we might need in the future to protect us? So the Constitution is just a piece of paper, but we have to decide whether or not we are going to fight to protect that Constitution that piece of paper that represents our way of life, right? So anyway, you know, I don't want to get too far down. I've been keeping these podcasts at 20 minutes. I'm at 18 minutes now, so I need to start wrapping it up. But it does bother me. I do think that right now we're against, we, we are in the middle of a battle of good versus evil. And I'm not even talking about, you know, God versus the devil or that type of thing. When I say good versus evil, I'm talking about the lifestyle that you choose. Do you choose a lifestyle of goodness? Do you choose a lifestyle of integrity? where you're working towards something, where you're looking to build something, or are you choosing a life of negative thoughts, of pessimism, of just doing things that you know are not the right things to do? You have to make a choice in your life, and you really need to start that from the inside out. Each individual person has to decide what type of person they're going to be, and then you live that life. And if the power is really up to you. So anyone that's listening, if you're, if you're having that battle right now, and we all have the battle. I mean, I think everybody that lives on this planet has the battle sometimes of, you know, whether you're good or, or whether you do things that maybe be, may be portrayed as evil. But you have to start from the inside out, make a decision in your life that you are going to represent good. And if you live your life a certain way, hopefully other people get the lead and they live their life that way as well. And, you know, hopefully we can make some changes politically in this country so we can continue to get back on the path to what the United States was intended to be by our founding fathers. And that, again, was you know a government for the people, by the people. And that was so important because if you have that government of real people that are running this country, then you're going to have people that care about the country, that care about us, not a bunch of bloated politicians and lawyers that are only profiting off illegal business deals from other countries, and that's evil. So we need more good in this country. So anyway... Thank you for joining in to the John DeVito show today. I want to let you know that I appreciate each and every one of you. If you have tuned into my show and you've spent time listening to me, I hope that I've helped you in some small way. And if you have enjoyed the show, please tell a friend, share this with a friend. 
and uh, come back again to another one of my shows. All right. God bless you. I love all of you. And thank you very much for listening.